So I'm going to uh, start a, a series of teaching uh, in this month, and is, the title is The Privilege of Stewardship. The Privilege of Stewardship, and I'll be coming from the scriptures in the book of Matthew, verse chapter 25, verses 14 through 30. And as I read those scriptures this morning, I'll be coming from the English Standard Version, the ESV Version, and I like that version. It kind of brings some clarity to what I'll, what I'll be talking about. So we'll be reading from that version this morning. Amen? So Matthew 25, 14, and 30. Let's just pray. Let's God bless the Father. Where Father, we came, we gave, we worship. Now it's time to receive of your word, Father. It's time to hear what you have to say to us in this hour. So we're just thankful, first of all, that we are considered your stewards, your managers here on earth. And we just thank you for trusting us with your riches and your resources. So as we read your word, as we read this parable of Jesus, we pray that the revelation will come to us, that you will bring revelation and bring out very key points in these scriptures, in this text that's going to change our lives. So we thank you right now, Father. We give you the praise, the glory, and the honor in Jesus' name. In the book of Matthew, the 25th chapter, verse 14 to 30, Jesus is, is teaching his disciples, and he here gave a parable, which is entitled the parable of the talents. The parable of the talents. And here Jesus is, is giving an example on stewardship, and is teaching his disciples on stewardship. So I might be in a teaching mode this morning, because I think it's something that's very key. Uh, to our lives. First of all, we have to understand that we are managers, that we are stewards of what God has, has given us. So as we read those scriptures, it reads as this. It says, For it would be like a man going on a journey who called his servants and entrusted to them his property. You may want to emphasize entrusted to them his property. To one, he gave five talents, to another two, to another one, to each according, another key phrase here, each according to his ability. Then he went away. He who had received the five talents went at once and traded with them, and he made five talents more. So also he who had two talents made two talents more. Verse 18. But he who received the one talent went and dug in the ground and hid his master's money. He hid his master's money. Look at somebody and say, we've got to work with what God given us. In verse 19 it says, Now after a long time, the master of those servants came and settled accounts with them. God is coming back. And we have to be accountable. Amen. And in verse 20, and he who had received the five talents came forward, bringing five talents more, saying, Master, you delivered to me five talents. Very key phrase here. <coughs> you delivered unto me five talents. Here I have made five talents more. His master said to him, Well done, good and faithful servant. You have been faithful over a little. I will set you over much. Enter into the joy of your master. And he also, who had the two talents, came forward and said, Master, you delivered to me two talents. Here I have made two talents more. His master said to him, Well done. Well done, good and faithful servant. You have been faithful over little. I will set you over much. Enter into the joy of your master. Verse 24. He also, he also who had received the one talent, came forward and said, Master, I know you to be a hard man, weeping where you did not sow, and gathering where you scattered no seed. So I was afraid and went and hid your talent in the ground. Here you have what is yours. But his master answered him, You wicked and slothful servant, you knew that I weep where I have not sown, and gather where I scattered no seed. Then you ought to have invested my money with the bankers. And at my coming, I should have received what was my own with interest. So take the talent from him and give it to him who has the ten talents. For to everyone who has will, to everyone who has will more be given. Who has will more be given, and he will have an abundance. But for the one who has not, even what he has will be taken away. 
and cast the worthless servant in the outer darkness, in a place that were that there would be weeping and gashing of teeth. So if we look at this, this parable, I want to talk about the privilege, the privileges of stewardship. The privileges of stewardship. The point in these scriptures here was twofold. Jesus made two key points here. Number one, Jesus mentioned that he will be going away. He will be going away. He, he, he talked about how, how the Lord will, will leave. He said he will be going away. But he expected his believers to be faithful and diligent stewards. He went away, but he, affected, he, he, he expected his, his believers to be faithful and diligent stewards. And number two, Jesus promises great rewards or judgment upon his return. So that was two key points to this whole problem. He promises great rewards of the faithful or judgment until, upon his return. We must work and be faithful stewards and manage God's resources until Christ's return. God has given us resources. We've got to manage those resources. We'll talk about some of those resources in a few minutes here. We all have a time and a season here on earth to prove our faithfulness. Look at somebody say, it is your season. We have a time and a season here on earth to prove our faithfulness. In John 9 and 4, you look on the screen there, John 9 and 4, I'll be reading from the King James Version. It says, Jesus says this, I must work the works of him that sent me while it is day. The night cometh when no man can work. Jesus understood that his life here on earth, he was only here for a season. So he said, I got to do God's will. I got to do, in other words, I got to do what God has asked me to do. I got to manage my time. I got to manage my life here on earth. You know, I got to work while it's day for the night coming when no man can work. So he understood that he had a season here in this earth, in the natural. He had a season here. But he, he understood that, that season would be up at some point. So he had to get God's work done within that season. In John 14 and 12, Jesus said this. To his disciples, he said, Verily, verily, I say unto you, he says, He that believeth on me, the works that I do, he shall do what? Also. Jesus said, The works I do, you shall do also. And greater works than these shall he do, because what? I go unto my Father. So Jesus understood that his life on earth would only be a temporary season, a process. He had to go through here on earth, but it was only temporary, that his season would be up. But he said that we would do greater works because he had to leave and go unto my father. Mm -hmm. In the book of Ecclesiastes, the third chapter, verses 1 and 2, when we talk about season, it says this in the scriptures. To everything there is a what? A season and a time to every purpose under the heavens. Look, somebody said, we're in our season. We're in our season. There's a time to be born. There's a time to die. There's a time to plant. There's a time to pluck up that which is planted. So here in the book of Ecclesiastes, it said there's a season and a time given to us. And in that season and time, we have to be good stewards and manage what God, the resources that God has given us. And now I want to define stewardship. I want to define stewardship. Well, let me go to Ephesians 5 and 16 since I have that up there. It'll be up there shortly. Ephesians 5 and 16, Paul says this. Making the most of every opportunity because the days are what? Evil. Or redeeming the time because the days are evil. In other words, we've got to take advantage of the opportunity or the season that God has given us to be fruitful. To be, to be fruitful servants and great stewards of God. I want to define stewardship and, 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 and give a definition of stewardship here. Stewardship, to manage and supervise the property of another. In other words, to be a steward, we manage and supervise the property of another. The careful and responsible management of something entrusted to one's care. A good steward is one who manages God's property and affairs because he realizes that God owns everything. Psalms 24 and 1, as we continue to get the foundation here, Psalms 24 and 1 says, For the earth is the Lord's, I'll read that from the NLT version, and everything in it, the world and all its people belong to him. So the Bible validates the fact that everything 
belongs to God. So that means if everything belongs to God, if God owns everything, then that means that we are stewards and that we are managers of what God has given us. So the next question would be, in your minds, what do we manage? If we are a manager, well, what do I manage? You know, if you, have, if you go to an apartment complex, you have a manager on site, don't you? That manages that apartment complex. They don't own it, but they manage it. So we all manage something in this life. God has given us resources. And a lot of times when we read this parable, we just narrow it down to just finances, but it's much bigger than finances. That's a part of it. But being a manager and a steward of God is much bigger than finances. Just to give you a few things, not all, but a few things God requires us to manage. One of them is your life. God requires that you manage your life. So the question is, what are, what, what are you doing with your life? God gave us a season and a time here on earth, and he has given us life. So we have to manage that life. I wish I, could, I, I, I wish I could go back in time, but we can't go back in time because there were some things in my life I would have done a lot different. Yeah, I look back at my life and said, man, I could have managed that, that part of my life a lot different. But I, I, I got wiser as I got older. But I have to manage my life. God gave us life here on earth. So the question is, what are you doing with your life and with the time that you have here on earth? Because Ecclesiastes says, there's a season to be born, and there's a season to die. So there is a season that we're in. I thank God at the moment I'm in the season I'm living. Amen? I'm still in my season. But we have to manage our life. In other words, God owns our life. He owns us. So we're just a manager of even our own life. So what are we doing with our life? We have to manage that. Also, our money, our resources. We have to manage our money and our resources. We have to manage and we are supervisors over our own body. <clears throat> the Bible says that we have been what? Purchased with a price. So we have to manage our own body. We also <clears throat> have to manage the Word of God. We are managers over the Word of God. We are managers over our time. What are you doing with your time? You know, how do you manage your time? Let me give you an example of, of it, was a, it was a period in my life I said, God, i got to spend more time with you. I got to read more, I got to pray more, I have to manage my time. So this is how I got my life on track uh, regarding my time. I recorded everything I did throughout my day. For a couple of weeks I've done that. And I looked at, I put it into time, I looked at everything I've done in the course of about two weeks. And I, I will record the time that I spent with God and, and when I was serving God. And I looked at that and I said, okay, I got to make some changes here in my, with my time. So I say, well, well, this is how I got my, my time management while well, getting my time management under control. I say, God, we tied our resources. But you want our, our, our money. I said, we tied our money, we give 10% of, of, of what God has given us. But I also have to tie my time. So this is what I've done. Two hours and 40 minutes a day, that's about 10%, about 24 hours, close to it. Two hours and 40 minutes a day, I will give God that time. And how I kept up with it, I documented it every day. If I spent 30 minutes of prayer, I document it. If I spent an hour of prayer, I document it. If I spent an hour reading the word, I document it. And at the end of the day, I said, well, did I give God 10% of my time? And that's how I began to get, 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 get my, my time management under control. And, and, I, and I was spending a whole lot of time watching sports on TV. A whole lot of time watching sports. So I narrowed my time even in that. I don't watch Carolina no more unless they're playing Duke. I don't watch NC State unless they're playing Duke. So I only narrowed my sports down to certain teams that I would watch on TV. And they help my time management. So the question is, we are managers of our time. What are you doing with your time? We manage our time. Oh, this is a good one here. I don't know if I need to go here or not, but I'm going to go there. We are responsible, Lord help me get this out. We are responsible for managing our health. Somebody say ouch. Somebody say ouch. But God has entrusted us with this property. Our body belongs to God. And he is concerned about our health. So we have to 
even manage what? Uh, help. Look at somebody and say, God, give me help in that area. I'm like Steve Harvey. God is not done with me yet. I still have some growing to do. But we are responsible for our help. We are responsible for our help. You know, I mean, we, we go with some time in ministry. We, we eat like we want to eat. And knowing the doctor told you not to eat certain things. And we eat it anyway. You know you got diabetes. You should be eating that uh, uh, cakes that we eat every day. And, and once a week or whatever. You know, and then we get sick in our body. And then we come to the altar and say, I would pray for me. You know, pray, lay hands on me. I can lay hands on you. I can fast. I can, I, can, I can fast for you, lay hands on you, speak in tongues. But if you're not managing your health, me laying hands on you is not going to help. It's not going to help. Because we have to obey the health laws. Oh, I knew that was tough for you. I knew that. I started to leave that one out, but God wouldn't allow me to. We also have to manage our gifts. What gifts did God give you? You're required as a steward to manage your gifts, the spiritual gifts that God gave you. You have to manage your gifts and your abilities. The abilities that God gave you, how you're managing that? You're a steward. You know, how are we managing God's house? We are stewards. Now, Jesus often talked about money because money is one of the most understood commodities anywhere on earth. Everybody understands money. So Jesus talked a lot about money when he talked about stewardship because everybody can understand that. But Christ was teaching his followers to be faithful and diligent with the resources that he gives them. He expects us. Going back to the scriptures in 25 and 14, and Jesus said this, For it will be like a man going on a journey who called his servants and entrusted them, what? His property. Christ first foretold that, that he would be like a man who would be traveling afar, which he did. He ascended it back, what? Into heaven. He traveled away from earth and ascended into heaven to sit at the right hand of God. So Jesus is at the right hand of God today, interceding on our behalf. He's in the scene on our behalf. He will sit there until his servants complete the work God has given us to do. When he returns, it will be a time for reward or it will be a time for judgment. Each of us, we have to stand before God one day. And, 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 and we want to look at this parable. This parable here, really, <coughs> Christ is dealing with believers. He's dealing with believers. And each of us, not only are those who, who are, are unbelievers, we have to face the judgment of God, but those who are believers, we have to give an account to God for everything that he has given us here on earth. I want to stand before God, and I want God to say, well done, thou good and faithful servant. I want to stand before God, and God say, you've done everything that I asked you to do. I want to stand before God, and he said, you use your gifts and your talents wisely, and you manage them effectively. I don't want to stand before God and God say, I gifted you with these talents and gifts and you didn't use them for building up the kingdom of God. I, I, I gifted you with resources that you didn't use to build up the kingdom of God. I gave you a family that you didn't manage properly. I, I don't want to stand before God. I, 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 I put you in a position in church for you to manage a church and you didn't manage it correctly. I don't want to stand before God and, 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 and have to give an account for something I didn't do. If you got a gift, God holds you accountable to use your gifts. As I always tell you, we got to find out what your gifts are, and we got to get you busy using those gifts because God holds you accountable for the gifts and talents that He has given you for the upbuilding of the kingdom, for the upbuilding of the kingdom. So we see here Jesus entrusted them, and the Bible says with His property, which validates what we just read in Psalms 24 and more that everything belongs to God. Everything, everything that you have belongs to God. Your home, your house. Your children, your wife, your husband, everything belongs to God. And we will all stand before the Lord, let somebody say, to give an account of our stewardship. So here the Lord went away, but he came back eventually. And he wanted each of them to give an account for the resources he gave them. What did you do with it? What did you do with what God gave you? What did you do? There will be some that will be very wealthy that God will ask, what did you do with what God gave you? Did you use it to upbuild the kingdom of God? In the Second Corinthians 5 and 9, the scripture says this in the NLT. For whether we are here in the body or away from this body, our goal is to please him. For we must all stand, look what the scripture says, for we must all what? Stand before God, what? To be judged. We will each 
receive whatever we deserve for the good or evil we have done in this what? Earthly body. So the scripture says we all going to stand before God. And we all have to give an account of our abilities and our talents. You guys are gifted. You're gifted musicians. But one day you're going to have to give an account for your gifts and your abilities. God did I use this gift and ability to uplift the kingdom of God. And give God praise for our musicians. Amen. For to, to, to worship God with us, with their gifts and their abilities. But we all have to give an account. Whether you're a teacher, you all have, you have to give an account one day. Did you use your gift to uplift the kingdom of God? Somebody said, I got gifts of prophecy. You know all the gifts. I can go through all of them. But whatever gift that God gave you, the spiritual gifts, did you use those gifts for the up? Keep of the kingdom, upbuilding of the kingdom. Did you use your resources for the upbuilding of the kingdom? Because actually God owns everything. Right. So we're just his managers. And in 1 Corinthians 4 and 2, the Bible says, now a person who is put in charge as a manager or a steward must be what? Faithful. So I established the fact that you all manage something. Look at somebody say, I'm a manager. Right. You're a man you all manage. Each one of us in this building manages something. You live in, you manage something. You have a life, you manage something. You have time on your hands, you have to manage that. But each of us are required to supervise our time, to supervise our health, to supervise our resources that God has given us here on earth. And each of us, I can't say, McGill, can you stand with me before I, when I go before the Lord? I can't ask McGill to stand with me. I got to go before the Lord and give an account, like here, that the servants did, to give an account of what God has given me. How did I use what God has given me? And, and how did we use our time? So I want you to do that exercise. I want you to go for the next two weeks. Just jot down what you're doing with your time for the next two weeks. And see how much time you're spending with God. And you may have to make some adjustments in your life. That's what I had to do. I had to make some adjustments in my life. And I just, this is just what I use to, to, to tie my time. Just like I tied my resources and my finances. I tied my time. God, I got to spend two hours and 40 minutes with you. So I got to get it in somehow. Because if you never really start recording Days and weeks will go by, and you realize, I'm not really spending time with God. But you're a manager. You're a manager of your time. You're a manager of your gifts. You're a manager of your talents. God gave them to you. He says, in, 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 again, in 1 Corinthians 4, 2, reading from the King James, said, Moreover, it is required of stewards that a man be found what? Faithful. That a man be found faithful. And in verse 14 and verse 15, again, verse 15, he says, To one he gave what? Five talents. This is an interesting point I'm going to bring out here. To one he gave what? Five talents. To another he gave what? Two. And to another he gave what? One. To each according to his what? Ability. To each according to his what? Ability. So sometimes we wonder why God, why, why brother so and so seem to get all the wealth, uh, uh, financial wealth? Why sister so and so seem to get all the wealth and, 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 and the financial wealth? Well, they were able to manage what God has given them. And he gave us gifts and resources based on our ability to do what? To manage. Guess what? This church will grow, but it's not going to grow until we prove to God that we can manage what he has given us. That we can manage, or, I, or the leadership, or myself, the pastor can manage the people that God has entrusted this ministry with. And then as we grow, you'll be managers in the ministry. You'll be supervising certain certain ministries here in this ministry. So, so you, have to, you have to manage what God has given you. Whatever God has given you. So we have to manage that. We have to manage it. It says, according to his what? Ability. God, the Lord, gave to his servant. He knew their abilities. God knows our abilities. God knows if some of you got rich today, you probably wouldn't even come back to church. But I wouldn't find out for the next six months. I was like, what? what? Where are you going to that? That's something I heard. That was in Hawaii. That was on their way to Spain. They were leave there and go to Germany. God knows who we can trust. We're not just picking on them. You know, I have to use my pick on God knows who we can trust. He gives us wealth according to our what? ability to have it. God knows that some of you wouldn't be able to have it. If he made you rich today, financially, you wouldn't be able to have it. You wouldn't be at church, you wouldn't be at You'd be doing that live streaming all over the world. <laughs> Last time I catch your live streaming, man, when you go on the phone now. Yeah. I'm gonna catch your live streaming. What time y'all come on down there? We about a seven hour difference from where we at. So we got a time to write. Y'all know that's true. God couldn't handle us with certain gifts. I always said that God couldn't handle me. He couldn't give me the gift to sing. I know he couldn't. 
I accepted that. I, I always show this a lot with my family. I have a family that can sing. My wife, y'all know. One side of my family can sing. I mean, can sing. The whole family sing. And the other side can't sing a lick. <laughs> And I said, God, why you didn't give me the ability to sing? But he knew I probably wouldn't have been able to have it. I'd be all down the aisle putting on the show all on my knees like, like Al Green or something, you know. I, I don't know. God just didn't give me that gift. But maybe he, he thought I couldn't handle it tomorrow. I couldn't have the gift. So God said, no, I'm not going to give you that gift. I give you other gifts. I know that you can have it. But see, this is the thing about this trouble. God knows your abilities. He understands your abilities. God knows what you can handle and what you can't handle. He know what, what you have been wired and equipped to do. He know your, the training that you had. He, he knows all of that stuff. He, he knows the exposure that you've been through that will prepare you to handle certain things. God, I mean, the Lord knows that. So that's why he, he gave his, his, his servants different amounts. One five, one two, what? and one one. Because he knew he understand their abilities. So if God didn't trust you with certain things, maybe it was because he didn't wire you for that. He wired you for something else. He didn't wire you for wealth. He wants us to prosper and, and, and prosper and wealth. I'm not saying that can't prosper, but he didn't wire you with that abundance because he wired you for something else. For something that he knew what your abilities would be. So it says, he who received five talents went at once and traded them. And he made what? Five more. He made five more talents. Made five more here. Five more talents. And so also he that had two talents made what? Two more talents. Talents. But interesting, as we, as we look at this, this problem, there's some, some other points I want to pull out here. Christ was saying three things here, a couple of things here, with these scriptures in verse 14 and 15. Number one, the Lord calls his own servants. He called his own servants. He called those who were supposedly his own and who were supposedly faithful, what? And responsible. So really, this message today is for God's people. I know that, that the unbelievers apply God's principles. You have people that's not saved, but they apply God's principles to their life, and it works. You have wealthy people that's not saved, not in church, not believers, but they apply God's principles to their lives. You have folks that are wealthy, don't even go to church, but they would tie 10% somewhere to a mission or to God's work because they understand God's what? Principles. And even God's principles work for them. But here... I believe Jesus is dealing with the believers, mm -hmm. those who he supposedly trusted with the resources that he has given them for the uplifting of the kingdom. Mm -hmm. So again, the Lord gave to each servant a different portion of his goods to look after. The point is that each person will be given a special talent, gift, or responsibility. No one will be left out. Whether you get five, whether you get two, whether you get one, the point is no one will be left out. God has given each of us gifts, talents, and abilities. They may they are different, we have different gifts, we have different talents, we have different abilities, but we all have them from God. We all have them from God. You see, some people like that, it's like they give them everything they do. They give them to teach. They give them to sing. They give them to preach. They can play any instrument that, that's, that's, that's up there. I mean, it's like everything they put their hands on, it's like, you ever been about like that? Everything they touch, then you got to go home and pray, God, I always kill this jealous spirit in me, God. In the name. It's like everything, you ever been about like that? Everything they touch just prosper. God, you gave them all those different gifts. But the point is, the point is, the point is, God gives us all, but we all have gifts. Amen. But we may not have the same number, but we all have gifts. And God holds us equally responsible to manage the two, the five, or the one. Equally responsible to manage what God has given us. To manage that. You know, and, and we all will have to stand and give an account for. And the Lord gave to each servant. According, as I said earlier, to his ability to handle. No two servants have the same abilities. None of us will have the same abilities and talents. Or they have the same resources. But we have equal uh, responsibility to manage what God has given us. God endows his goods, his gifts, as he will. As he will. As he will, knowing each servant perfectly. God knows us perfectly. He knows our strengths. He knows our weaknesses. He knows what he can give us. He waters whatever he has called us and anointed us to do here on earth. God knows. He knows that. So he endowed us with different gifts. 
you know, different gifts. Each servant receives all the gift he needs and can use. So the point is, each servant, each of us receive everything that we need to glorify the kingdom here on earth. He knew the talents he had to give you. He knew the gifts that you needed to do what he called you to do. He knew that, 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 that some of you would have to be wealthy because he need because he takes finances to what? Support the ministry. God, God has blessed some with wealth to support what? The ministry. But whether we got much, as the scripture I read for the offering, whether we have a lot or whether we have a little, God holds us equally responsible to manage our gifts, whether we have 16, 17, 18, or whether we have two. We have the equal responsibility to manage their gifts. Whether you're a millionaire or whether you just you just have ten thousand dollars, he holds us equally responsible to manage the resources what? that he has given us. Whatever it is, equal, equal, uh, he holds us equal accountable to manage that. So we see here that, that God holds us accountable. In Revelation, in Romans 12 11, I'm gonna go to that scripture in Romans 12 and 11. Romans 12 and 11. I'm gonna go there. Romans 12 and 11. And uh, and uh, the scripture says this: for us to be not what? Slow folk in business, but verb in the spirit, what? Serving the Lord. But let me give some background on the scripture. The two servants, there were two servants, as we look at verse 16 and 18, there were two servants that were faithful, correct? And there was one that was what? Unfaithful. There were two servants that were responsible. Let's talk about them for a minute. The two responsible servants. They went to work immediately when God entrusted the resource. He left over five times. When we took, they went to work on it. Look at somebody say, we got to work this thing. Yeah, we got to work. Whatever God given us, we got to work. Look at somebody say, faith without works is dead. Faith if God has given you a talent, if you're not using it, it is dead. If God given us resources that we're not using, in the sight of God, the resources are dead. Faith without works is dead. So the two immediately put God's resources to work. And they multiplied what, what God had given them. They were faithful. They were diligent. That's how God wants his servants to be. Because after all, we are privileged to be even considered stewards of God. Amen. I want that to sink in for just a minute. We are privileged to be able to manage the resources that God has given us. God gave you gifts, you privileged to have those gifts. God gave you wealth, you privileged to have those wealth. God gave you whatever God gave you, you are privileged to have that. It's a privilege just to have what the Almighty God has given us. Amen. You have abilities to play. It's a privilege to be able to play. And glorify the kingdom of God. That's a privilege. It's not a right. It's a privilege that God has given us. The two took advantage of that privilege. And they and they and they multiplied what God had given them. They were faithful and diligent. They used their energies, their abilities immediately. The less gifted servant worked as and labored as much as the more what gifted servant. They used what the Lord has given them. So matter, it doesn't matter whether you have a lot. <clears throat> or less, you have an equal responsibility to manage that. Now get it back to Romans 12 and 11. Romans 12 and 11. Both of these servants were successful. They gained and doubled what the Lord had given them. They were both equally what? Successful. They had different amounts, but they were equally what? Successful. Romans 12 and 11 says, not slow for business, but verbal and spirit, what? Serving the Lord. The two servants who were responsible were not slowful. Another trend they say lazy or so uh, uh, lazy or slowful means the same thing in business. It means when God entrusts us with something, we have to be and manage our time and what and get it done and whatnot. Procrastinate. Mm -hmm. The third servant procrastinated. He procrastinated. He didn't do what he should have done with the resources that God had given him. That God gave him. So so they, 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 he procrastinated. But God wants us not to be what slowful in his business. He requires us to be what? Managers of our time. That's why I said we have to evaluate what are we doing with our life. We can't be slowful with our life. You know, we can't be slowful in that. So God expects us to be diligent. And in 1 Corinthians 4 and 2, uh, in the King James Version, it says more over is required in stewards than what? Than a man be found what? Faithful. God is looking for faithful stewards that will manage his resources. That he gives you your life. God wants you to manage your life and he wants you to manage your life well. He wants you to take a look at your life and say, God, have I managed my life? Look at somebody say, it's not too late. It's not too late. It's not too late. Somebody said, I wish I could. I can't get that time I lost. You can't go back and find that time. That time is gone. But you have to start today and say, God, from this day, I'm going to manage my life. I'm going to manage my resources. Oh, let me get this. Help me, Holy Spirit. I'm going to manage my health. I'm going to manage my health. I'm going to manage whatever abilities 
that God has given me? Am I using those for the glory of God and building up the kingdom of God? That's what God is looking for. Because we are privileged. We are privileged. And then in verse, let's go to uh, verse 29. Verse 29, 25, 29. You don't have to turn that. I'm going to read the scripture again. Verse 25, 19. It says, Now, after a long time, the master of those who hear, the master of, of him who, who, uh, okay, but so also he, I'm going to verse 18. Let me skip back to verse 18. But also he who had the two talents made two talents more, but he who received the one talent, that's what I'm trying to get to, went and dug in the ground and hid what? His master's money. 19. Now, after a long time, the master of the house, or the master of those servants, came and set up our accounts with them. He came back. <clears throat> Verse 20. And he who had received the five talents came forward, bringing another five more, you know, and then we had two, he brought what? Two more. And it's given down to verse 20, 22. And he also who had two talents came forward and said, Master, you delivered me the talents. Here I made two more talents. And then he got down, his master said, well done, I good and faithful servant. But get it down to verse 24. He says, he also, who ever see what? The one time came forward and said, Master, I knew you to be a hard man, weeping where you did not sow, and gathering where you scattered those seed. So I was afraid I went and hid your talents in the ground. So he came back for the, the one that, that wasn't faithful. You know, and it was interesting when I, when I, when I, read, when I read these scriptures, that previously, when God gave them the resources, the first, the, the, the one that was successful, two that was successful, acknowledged that God gave it to them. But the third servant didn't acknowledge it at that point that God even gave him the resources. He didn't even acknowledge it, but the first two did. In other words, they acknowledged that God owns what? Everything. They had a different mentality. When God blessed them, God gave them talents, God owns what? what? Everything. They said, you delivered me, they told God, the Lord. You delivered to me five talents. The woman two talents, you delivered unto me. You, God, delivered it unto me. But the one that was unfaithful didn't acknowledge that God is the owner of everything. And that's when we make our first mistake, when we don't acknowledge that we are only stewards, that we are only managers, but God owns everything. Our money, God owns our money. Our time, God owns our time. Our body, God owns our body. Our abilities, God gave us. He delivered us the abilities that you have. The big that Bible said, I mean, it, it is he that calls us what? To even get wealth. It's by his ability that even give us the power to get wealth. God delivers those gifts to us. But the slowful servant didn't even acknowledge that. He didn't acknowledge that God had given him those. And in Matthew 18 and 23, look what Jesus said. Jesus will reckon it and he, he's going to return back to the world. Matthew 18 and 23. It says, Therefore the kingdom of heaven can be compared to a king who decided to bring his accounts up to date with servants who have borrowed money from him. Servants who have borrowed money from him. Now, Romans 14 and 12. So then, every one of us should give an account, why? To God. Of himself to God. So each of us, as I said earlier, will have to give an account. And as I said, both the, the successful servants acknowledged God's guilt and grace that the Lord had delivered it to them. They both were bold in approaching God. And look at the new scriptures, they was bold when they approached God. Why were they bold when they approached God? Because they'd done what God had asked them to do. They've done what God asked them to do. They, they, they were good managers. I mean, we can boldly go before God when we know we've been a good manager of what God has given us. We, we, we have joy. We, 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 have, we, we know that we've done and we've managed what God has given us and we're managing it well. You can boldly just, you don't mind coming before God. God, I, I, I come boldly before you because I have managed that that you have given me. But when we're not managing that what God has given us, it makes it difficult to come boldly before God because we realize we didn't manage what God has given us to manage. We didn't manage it well. You know, he, he, he gave us gifts and talents, but we didn't manage it, it well. <clears throat> In 1 John 4, 4 and 17, you know, uh, Jesus said this. In 1 John 4 17. And as we live in God, our love grows more perfect. So we will not be afraid on what? The day of judgment. So we will not be afraid on the day of judgment. And the day of judgment, I, I, I can be, go boldly before God, knowing that I did. I was a good manager here on earth. I managed the resources that God has given me. But we can face him with confidence because we live like Jesus here what? in the earth. As managers, we have to live like Jesus lived here on earth. 
That's that, that, that's a Jesus was our role model. If you want to be a manager, live like Jesus did. He on earth. We can manage the resources. But the Lord, the two servants, the Lord commanded the two servants and gave them what? Great rewards and joys. We read the scriptures. God rewarded them for their work. Look at said, there's reward for your faithfulness. Yes. If you're a good steward and you manage what God gave you, there is a reward for that. But there are also consequences for what? Poor stewardship. There's consequences from poor stewardship. Look at verse 24. It says, he also who had received the one talent came forward and said, Master, I know you to be a hard man, weeping where you did not sow, and gathering where you scattered no seed. So I was afraid. I went and hid your talent in the ground. I know I got to go, but I got to touch that one just a little bit, okay? He hid his talent while in the ground. I remember something uh, uh, Miles Monroe had said in a teaching years ago. He said there's going to be many gifts and talents in the graveyard. You find the best gifts and talents on earth in the graveyard. What he meant by that was people took their gifts, their talents to the grave, and they never used them for the glory of God. They died with their ability to write songs that could bless the kingdom of God. They died because before uh, they died with their resources because they never used their resources to uplift the kingdom of God. They were buried. So this, this servant went and buried what God has given them. Have you buried anything God has given you? What gifts are you bearing today? Have you buried a gift? Have you buried something that God has given you and you're not using it? That's what this talent, that's what this, this servant he did. The stuff was he, he he buried his talent. He thought he was pleasing God. God, God blessed him with a talent. The other two went and, 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 they, and they multiplied and they served and they faithfully invested what God had given them. And, but but this, this, this third servant, uh, he did not. He hid his talent. He hid his talent. And then God says, but the master answered him. He said, what? You wicked and slow for what? Servant. You knew that I weep where I have not sown and gather where I scatter no seed. Then you ought to have invested my money with the bankers. And at my coming, I should have received what was my own with what? Interest. In other words, there's consequences. And then the scripture says, he says, take that away from what? The slothful and give it to the one that have now ten times. We read a scripture earlier as, as I'm coming to close. I'm not going to end this today. But there was a scripture that, that we read earlier in Luke 16 and 10. Let's just go to that scripture. I'm going to close there. Luke 16 and 10. There's a scripture that I read earlier. And it says this in the King James Version. It says, He that is faithful in that which is what? Least is faithful in much. And he that is unjust in that which is what? Least is what? Unjust also in much. Listen, I say, I am a steward. I am a, steward. I am a manager. I am a if you own a company, you have to manage it well. If you own a business, you have to manage it well. Why? Because it all belongs to God, and we represent God what? here on earth. We are his stewards. We are his managers. Let's stand at this time. We are his stewards on earth. We are his managers. God expects us to be faithful with the abilities, the talents, the gifts. He wants us to manage our life. He wants us to manage our time. Manage our money. Manage our resources. Manage what he has given us here on earth. And I want to hear him say, well done, what? Now good and faithful servant. There's always consequences to poor management. I think we all at some point probably experience that in our life at some point. If we didn't manage, if we didn't manage things well, we see the consequences of that. And Jesus talked about money a lot because we can relate to that commodity. It's easy to understand. If we don't manage money right, what happens? It creates problems. It creates issues. There's consequences for poor management. If we don't manage our health, what happens? Our health begins to what? To decline. If we don't manage our families, what happens? Our families begin to grow apart. But God has called us to be good stewards. And He called us to be good managers. And you say, well, I don't have a lot. I don't have enough to be a good manager. No, you got to be faithful in what you already have. Because if you're faithful in the little, You'll be faithful in much. If you have a hundred dollars and you're not faithful with that, then you're not gonna be faithful with a million. You're not faithful with a hundred. But if you faithful with the hundred, then you'll be faithful with the million. But if you adjust with the hundred, then you'll be unjust with the million. Look somebody say, I'm a steward. I'm a manager of what God has entrusted me with. Now look at them say, neighbor, 
Amen. Go dig up that talent and that gift and your resources that you bird in the graveyard. Somebody give God some praise. Amen.